side by side, linked hand in hand, the barefoot couple drift towards the smeared out horizon, where the land melts into the sea, the earth dissolves into the sky, and all rigid matter is gradually gauzified. They are somewhere between the material world and the immaterial field of experience, where it is possible that it is possible that it is possible. Above them glows the double sun. Below them hums the electric field as they move towards the incandescent edge of the future. A time in which they will be free, free of their labors, returned to the aboriginal world of primal pleasures, all watched over by machines of loving grace, where it is possible that it is possible that it is possible that it is possible. This is the second photograph I became fascinated by, the second one to feature familiar figures in an unexpected congress with technology. Again, it's an image of transmission, of being transported into another dimension, and it's another image from a long tail's own record of itself. And although it appears to be this high-tech imposition, this superimposition above the natural world and perhaps even above nature itself, this grid that they walk on actually follows ley lines, ancient alignments as deep and archaic as the geoglyphs of the Nascar Plains or the Atacama Desert. But these two, these two here, they get that the grid they're in is only part of a far greater grid, part of a piece of a pattern that's repeated, repeated endlessly throughout the endless cosmos. It is the pattern, the pattern that connects everything. The grid, as it flows beneath them, then resembles the air that flows over it, and the air resembles the light that traverses it, and the light resembles the heat on which it rides throughout the cosmos. So this picture then, a fragment of this cosmic grid represented systems thinking. And systems thinking is the understanding that everything is a configuration of parts connected and joined together by a web of relations. And the horizon of this consciousness extends endlessly with the awareness that anything, be it animal or mechanical, born or made, can be understood as a system. Now this understanding is called cybernetics. And cybernetics looks at how information flows through or within a system. And more interestingly, how regulating what's called the feedback in a system, adjustments can be made to improve that system. All right, let me try and demonstrate. I'm going to do a drawing. Let's get rid of the torrent. Okay, so the system I wish to improve, the goal I want to achieve is that I'd like to find more pitches. You know, I'd like to improve my picture, picture searching system so I can steal more pictures. So this is the process. I send out a signal. I do a search and the response I get back from that signal is the feedback. I then adjust my signal in accordance with the feedback I have received and retransmit my now improved request, my improved signal. Repeating the process so that my signal becomes more efficient over time. Strengthening and amplifying the path until eventually the whole process becomes automated. The system understands my needs and can continue the process I initiated without my real involvement, as now I'm in a continual feedback loop. The system has achieved an internal equilibrium or homeostasis, uh, and I have programmed a cybernetic device. So that's the basic of cybernetics.
And through cybernetics, anything can be viewed as these goal-orientated feedback loops. Like them, their individual mental state, their loving relationship, their community, the environment they are in, the culture they belong to, the politics that govern them, the whole earth itself. All these coupled and interlocking loops aggregate together to form a single vast mechanism, kind of super organism. And this is the hard bit. Okay, I'll, I'll do one more kind of chalkboard demonstration to try and. Okay, so take this drawing I made. So when I'm drawing, the process of constantly adjusting the stroke of my arm to the surface of the blackboard is not just something going around inside my mind. Instead, it is being brought about by the whole system of brain, eyes, arm, stroke, chalk, blackboard. Information is flowing through the entire system. Mind is not only present within my body, but is extended into the larger mind of Mark Leckie drawing at the blackboard with audience watching him here in New York. All these components making up what you call an ecology of mind. Yeah. And these two, these two intrepid travellers, walking on the squares, straightening out the curves and curving out the straights, they get that. They get that this is the grid that we are all in. And they get that through cybernetics, we could develop techniques, technologies of transformation to create the conditions of our own equilibrium, find our own balance. They get that to become as confident as a rock or the engine, we need to unhumanize ourselves a little. That to truly experience the wholeness of life, we need to recognize that everything in the world is in some sense alive. Part of a universal community in which all relationships have the potential to become brilliant and magical opportunities. A community then which must include machines as well in order to stay fully present to all the parts of yourself. Each living and non-living element responding in sympathy to one another, making this perfect couple. These are the potential techniques of ecstasy and they get that, that it is possible, that it is possible, that it is possible. Oh, that's come up too early. Can we take that off, please? You've ruined my surprise. Ah, uh, it's the best gag of the evening as well. Um, okay, so that was cybernetics. And cybernetics had a big influence on the 60s counterculture, especially around the years 66 to 1972. And it was in these six years, uh, it was put to use by people such as Stuart Brand and the Whole Earth Catalogue, Werner Erhardt Est and the Landmark Forum, teachers at the Esland Institute of Big Sur, and even in music with the early kraut rock of Can and Noy. They're all, all sowing the seeds of an interconnected, global and cosmic cybernetic system. A dream that has come to fruition with open source and creative commons initiatives. And especially, especially in the self-generated feedback system of Wikipedia. <laughs> 